your reaction, first of all, if you would please, um, to uh, our exclusive by Deborah. So we've known for some time that Iran is supplying weapons to Russia, and we've seen that in the form of the Shaheen 136 drones, which have featured so heavily in the recent air attacks on Kyiv. But I think this is the first documentary evidence that Iran's support includes things like artillery ammunition. And although this contract is for quite a small sum, it does show that Russia is benefiting from the support of its relatively few friends in the world, which will include Iran and probably also North Korea. My goodness me. Um, so we, we had known about it, but this is the evidence, if you will, not independently corroborated, but it's certainly looking in that direction. Um, who else might be doing the same? So uh, Iran, I think, has the larger relationship. We know there have been attempts to supply weapons from North Korea. And the big question has always been, what does China do to support Russia, because that would be absolutely game changing if China connected its stock of weapons to uh, Russia's front line. There's no sign of that happening beyond some perhaps small bits of technology. But but that would be the game changer that would really make a difference in a way that Iranian support generally will not. What impact um, does support from Iran have on Russia's ability to take part in this war? Well, during the course of this war so far, both sides have consumed a vast amount of the ammunition that they had on their shelves. Russia last year probably fired about 10 years' worth of its annual production of artillery ammunition. So both sides are, are short this year. And you can see that in the way the fighting is, is taking place. And, and the key message is, because this war has turned into a big war that's going on for a very long time and probably has two to three years to go, I guess. It, it does show that either side can only win if they are supported by their industry. In the case of Russia, mobilizing its own industry. In the case of Ukraine, Ukraine can only win if the West mobilizes its defense industry in ways that it's talked about, but has not yet really got going on. We've been hearing uh, Russian claims overnight that they have seen off attacks um, from Ukraine in the Donetsk region. What should we read into that? Well, first of all, we should expect there to be something of a war of words to continue around the prospects of the offensive. And this uh, description by Russia uh, sets out the sort of thing they would have expected to see. So roughly two brigades attacking. They've described uh, where they think it would go as the most likely place. So this single report might just be part of the war of words. And, and it, you know, it doesn't really matter because this offensive, when it really gets going, it's, it's not going to be a day's work. It will go on for some weeks, even months, and it will include not just land warfare, but war in the air and possibly even uh, attacks at sea. So we, we should remain a little sceptical. But the fact is, whenever this counteroffensive comes, nobody really thinks it's going to throw all the Russians out of Ukraine. So we should see this offensive as just part of a long war that will take us to the next st stage. And it should set the scene for more strategic support to Ukraine. It's not going to achieve much more than that. How critical is it, um, this uh, much heralded offensive, would, in, in your view? Well, it is critical because it's I imperative for the people of Ukraine and the countries that are supporting Ukraine, that Ukraine proves it can win on the battlefield so that the the, the, the blood of their own people is seen to make sense. And the West senses that if it provides more support, as it intends to right now, that that will lead to success in Ukraine and the strategic defeat in some way of, uh, of Russia. So it's a very important step down the road in showing this war can be won. It's not going to win the war on its own. Now, talk to me about this Russian volunteer corps that we're hearing more and more about. Um, they said that they had captured um, some Russian soldiers and wanted to trade them. It doesn't look as though that has got them very far. What, how should we interpret uh, uh, groups like the Russian Volunteer Corps? So there, there appear to be two quite small groups that operate in southern Russia. They're clearly well connected to Ukraine in the way that they are getting s supplies of weapons and, and equipment. And the interesting thing is that what they do is actually quite small scale. I mean, in the case of these 
prisoners. I think there are held to be two of them. But but what is much more significant is the effect they have on the on the atmosphere, on the narrative in Russia. I mean, at their most extreme, they talk about inspiring a revolution in Russia on the scale of 1917. There is absolutely no sign of that being anywhere close. But it's interesting that they like to talk that way. We also hear about a group called the Polish Volunteer Corps. They've been making um, countless statements uh, on Twitter saying that they've been involved in the operation in Volgorod as well. Um, when you have these small groups, how do they help in the war effort, if you will, or are they just a hindrance? No, they are important, uh, partly because of the psychological effect they have on this sense of security in Russia. And then there is a small practical effect that if they conduct paramilitary operations in Russia, it means Russia has to divert its own resources, its own soldiers and police to protect their own people. So it's designed really as activity to unsettle Russia more generally and to distract some resources. But, but we should recognise that in terms of its actual effect on the course of this war, it'll be very small. And just to go back to where we started, as far as Deborah's report is concerned, as, as we said, it's not yet independently verified, but we, uh, it has been handed over uh, to the Ukrainian Prime Minister when he was here in the United Kingdom for the King's coronation, also to our own um, Foreign Secretary, who is looking into the veracity of this report. You wouldn't be surprised at the content. No, no, I wouldn't. Actually, what is quite a surprise, it's only for about a million dollars worth of uh, ammunition. So, say, roughly 500 artillery shells at, at market rates. So there isn't a great surprise here. Uh, we already know that we take a different view to Iran on, uh, on Russia and their support to the war uh, in, in Ukraine. But it does provide a concrete example, if it's true, of how this is actually a, a, you know, a very uh, well-structured, thoughtful business.